Hey, what's up guys? It's Beja at Baker Hill Farm. Today I have a canning video for you. As you can tell by the title, we are pressure canning potatoes. So we're doing Irish potatoes today, not sweet potatoes. You do not use the same process for those. So just make sure that you are just using regular Irish potatoes, like red potatoes, some kind of white potato, just not a sweet potato. So I'm going to show you first everything that you need to start this and then we will get started with the process. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need is obviously a pressure canner. Make sure it is a pressure canner, not a water bath canner. I have a Presto pressure canner. I will link it in the bottom um, description part there. And then you also need a weighted jiggler. So this is a weighted jiggler. I have 10 pounds on here. If you take this disc off here, this is just five pounds of weight, but adding this disc on here makes it 10 pounds. You need 10 pounds unless you are in like some kind of extreme altitude. And then I don't know what you need. You need to look in the ball book to figure that out. Um, the other thing you're gonna need is obviously your potatoes. You're gonna need a bowl with water. That's what I like to use to keep them from browning while I'm processing them, because it takes a bit. You're gonna need a cutting board and a knife, and also a vegetable peeler if you're going to peel your potatoes. Um, a little bit on the peeling the potatoes thing. There are plenty of people who can their potatoes and don't peel them. This isn't recommended by the canning people, whoever they are, um, but, so I like to peel mine just for personal preference. Um, I don't trust myself to get all the dirt off, honestly. That's why I like to peel mine. I do leave a little bit of skin on here and there if it's just in a crevice and I can't get it. Um, and I don't worry about it. I've never had any issue. Um, that's why they recommend peeling them is because bacteria can still be in the skin if you don't peel them. Now, there's plenty of families, like generations of families, who have been canning long before the canning hierarchy of people were established and they don't peel their potatoes. And who am I to tell them that they should? So you're not gonna catch me trying to boss people around when it comes to that. The other thing you're gonna need is boiling water to pour over your potatoes and then any seasoning that you wanna season your potatoes with. Um, I'm just gonna do salt. There's been plenty of times where I didn't add anything uh, because I usually end up flavoring the dish however I want it after we are gonna use our potatoes. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna wash all these potatoes down and we're gonna peel them up. What I like to use to scrub my potatoes is a loofah that um, I grew a couple years ago. There's a little seed in there. Oh, you wanna plant a loofah? <laughs> this just works out well and I just scrub them all down, give them a good rinse and then set them to the side. All right, so now time to peel. I have this like old school peeler, it works awesome. Um, it's Swiss made, my mom gave this to me. It's the best peeler in the world. And I just get to peeling. If you've got some sunburned areas that are green, you can just peel that right off. Okay, so as I'm peeling, I'm setting them up here and I'm cutting out any kind of funky spots. And I'm going ahead and cutting them up and putting them in this water. That way they don't start browning, oxidizing or anything. Okay, so you might be wondering what size I do. I do about like this. And guys, my hands aren't dirty. They're just stained from gardening. I do about like this. I want it to fit through the jar opening, but I don't want it so small that they turn to mush once they process. All right, guys, so we are ready for the next step. We have all our potatoes peeled and cubed up right here. Here is my canner. I went ahead and turned the burner off so it can start getting warm. Here's my kettle. I have it turned on as well so it can get warm. You just want to make sure that the, you put warm water over the potatoes and put them in a warm canner. You don't want to do cold water and then put it in a warm canner. Now, I don't recommend starting everything from cold, like starting with cold water and cold water in your canner. The only reason is you have to heat the water up and it's going to make your potatoes actually cook longer 
and they'll get kind of like mushy and grainy. So don't want to do that. So I've got my funnel here. I'm just going to put the potatoes in up to the neck. Okay, so here's the neck here. This is about one inch. You need one inch headspace for pressure canning. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill my jars up to the neck and I'll show you what that looks like. Every once in a while, I'll kind of shake it around like that so they all settle down in there. Okay, so I can probably get couple more stuffed in there okay and so there is my one inch you see that and then I will pour the warm water up to the neck when it's done okay so now that all my jars are filled I'm gonna take my lids I use the four jars lids they just work so well for me they're thicker more durable and they just have a great seal so I love these lids. I'm going to pop them in my canner for about 30 seconds to a minute to soften up the ring. Okay, now I'm going to pour my water over up to the neck. So see right there, it's up to the neck. That's one inch. I'm going to do this with all of the jars. Okay, so now I'm gonna season my jars. I'm just gonna use sea salt. This actually isn't from Sam's. This is just Azure sea salt. So you wanna use sea salt, caning salt, or some sort of salt that does not have iodine. So I'm just doing a quarter teaspoon of salt in each jar because I'm sure I'll season these up some other way when it's time to cook. Okay, now you want to wipe the moisture off of the top of your jars so that we get a really sticky seal. Not really sticky, but just so it has some grit because with that little rubber silicone ring. Make sure you put the right size lid on the right size jar. And when putting your rings on, you want to put your ring on to fingertip tight with one hand. Okay, that's how I do it. And I never get any buckling. You don't want to crank down on it or this is going to buckle and pop up when it tries to seal. All right, now we're going to place all of our jars in. Got my tongs. My water is steaming, it's hot, my jar is warm, but I'm still going to lower it in, lower, lower it, lower it in slowly. Just in case my water's a lot hotter, I don't want to shock it. If you've ever canned and you find a jar that has a circle perfectly fallen out of the bottom, like the glass just severed itself in a perfect circle, it's because your canner was way hotter than your jar. Okay, so all my jars are inside. I'm going to add on my lid and go ahead and lock it. Okay, so up here we have a lot going on that you need to know about. So. Right here on a Presto canner, you have a little safety mechanism. And so what this does is when your canner starts to build up pressure and get hot, which it's gonna start doing because I'm turning the heat up, this mechanism is gonna pop up. And so this is actually a safety feature. It serves two purposes. When it pops up, you cannot take the slid off. It locks it. It catches on a little metal lip in here. So that it protects you from trying to take it off and you've got too much pressure in there and steam is just gonna go everywhere. The other thing it tells you is that you're up to an adequate amount of pressure. It takes about 10 minutes for it to pop up and you can go ahead and put your weighted jiggler on here. So remember, we're waiting for this to pop up and then we can add our weighted jiggler. Once we add our weighted jiggler, we want it to come up to 10 PSI, okay? 
10 PSI should rock your jiggler in a steady rhythm back and forth. That tells you that this gauge is accurate. Now for my canner, and I guess for the area I'm in, I don't get my steady rhythm until this reads 11 to 12 PSI. Now that's still 10 PSI because you have to have 10 PSI to even move this jiggler. Does that make sense? Many people can without this at all. They just go off this rhythm, okay? This, going off of this rhythm is safer than only relying on this. So once we get to that point, I'm gonna bring you back and show you, okay? Okay, so our little safety mechanism popped up. And so now I can place my weighted jigger on. Now do not start your time yet. You wanna process your potatoes for 40 minutes, but you cannot start your time until you are up to the appropriate pressure. So we're trying to get to 10 pounds of pressure. It's gonna look on my little gauge like 11 or 12, but when we come back, you'll see that this will be rocking and I will be um, able to start my time. Okay guys, so you can see right here, my jiggler has a steady rhythm. And you can also see I'm actually a little past 10 pounds of pressure. So now I can start my timer for 40 minutes. Another thing to keep in mind is you want to keep it about that. You don't want to let the heat continue to increase and go well beyond your pressure. You don't want to be up in the 15 pounds or anything like that. Um, if your recipe and your elevation requires 10 pounds of pressure, keep it around that. Okay, so my kitchen is super loud right now because I'm cooking multiple things and making bread, but my timer just went off. So all I did was turn my burner off and I'm gonna let it just naturally release. Do not, where is it? Do not take off this weighted jiggler here. That will cause your pressure to release too quickly. Your jars will break, your things might not seal. Just don't touch it. Let it come down on its own. It's gonna take a while. We'll just let it be. Okay, so it came all the way down. This, top of the canner's hot. This little piece right here went down on its own. So now I can remove this little thing, my weighted jiggler, which is hot. So make sure you grab the black and don't touch the top of the canner because it's very hot. Um, I'm just gonna let this hang out for a while, maybe like 10 minutes or more. Then I'll take the lid off, I'll leave them in there for a few minutes, and then we'll pull them all out. So a lot of people say, um, just take the lid off, let them sit five minutes and pull them out. When you're pressure canning things and pressure canning things like potatoes, it's still really hot in there. So letting it cool down for a while is a good idea. Um, because if you expose it to a different temperature really quickly, you can get some siphoning of your jars. And that's when you pull your jar out and um, your jar is like this and your liquid level has gotten really low. That's because it's siphoned. So um, that can be due to other things like overfilling your jars and things like that. But it also can be because of a drastic temperature change. Now I'm pulling them out. All of, all of my jars sealed. Okay guys, that is it. That's how you can potatoes. It's super simple. Just take your rings off now, put your dates, stick them in your pantry. Um, I hope you guys thought this video was helpful. Please give it a like and a subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.